Joining us now is Katerina Seminetti, Senior Vice President at Morgan Stanley Private Wealth Management, and Jeff Kilberg, founder and CEO at KKM Financial and a CNBC contributor. Guys, welcome. Uh, Katerina, are, are we perhaps focused on the wrong thing here if we're thinking that uh, no hike or 25 basis points is the focal thing? Is the real question how much banks are going to slow the economy all by themselves by extending less credit? Well, John, it's a it's a good question. You know, when we are seeing the situation with the SVB Bank and other regional banks unfold, you know, the question is, you know, is this something that you know specifically, you know, is is affecting the financial sector, or perhaps as a direct result of the Fed action over the course of the last twelve months? And one thing we know for sure is that the growth is slowing, but. From the Fed standpoint, is it slowing enough to get the inflation to where they need to be? And that's the big question that they will need to answer. And perhaps we have one or two more rate hikes on the horizon, but they're getting near to pivot. And uh, you know, it will be interesting to see you know where they end up. But we have a very data-driven fact, and they're going to be looking at all the data, including the situation with the banks. Well, Jeff, is the Fed even really driving this bus anymore? I just I wonder because I think at some point it was a question of <laughs> had. The Fed set in motion a series of events that was going to slow the economy down regardless. And so it's less about watching what, what does the Fed do? Does the Fed slam on the brake or, or not? And it's more about watching what the economy and the market's doing all on its own. You're right, John. And the Fed has been notoriously horrible in any type of reaction. They were keeping rates too long, too low, all the way up to 2022. They were buying assets just up until February of 2022. So I think you bring up a great point. The Fed's reaction. However, Katerina brings up a great point about data-driven. But the Fed right now, I think they do know what they don't know. And the next critical 48 hours is really going to be imperative for investors globally to understand, will the Fed flinch? Will they flinch and pause, or will they stick on track and realize that the SVBs, the signature banks, and even First Republic to a certain extent, that is nuanced. Those are not big banks. Those are mismanaged treasuries. I'd love if I could have taught them how to trade treasuries back in the 90s at the <laughs> Chicago Board of Trade, John. But nonetheless, that is separate. So I think if you look at the bigger overall picture, the Fed is going to raise 25 basis points, but they're going to do that very dovish raise of rates, but they're going to give some type of forecast that they're going to wait and understand the uncertainty, because there is a ton of uncertainty, but I am cautiously optimistic that some of these nuanced banks are really not systemic to the economy. Katarina, sometimes I think we can get lost in the details and not see what's obvious. I don't know whether this is one of those times or not, but are rates pretty much going to stay pretty high for a decent amount of time, or Right. If, if they go lower, is it because we're in a serious recession? And therefore, like either one of those scenarios, what should an investor do here? Well, John, the question is, is, is what effect all this slowing growth is having on earnings? And in our view, earnings are still way below the fair market value. And until they get down to more realistic levels, we're going to remain in this bear market territory. Well, so when you say that, when you say that, do you mean that? Equities are expensive? That's exactly what I'm saying. And while our longer term out outlook is positive, and we believe at some point Fed is going to start cutting rates, until we get there, our short term outlook is quite negative. You know, we are bearish. We tell investors to be cautious. We tell them to shelter in place. This is not the time to change strategy, but, you know, to be ready for some extensive market volatility. Okay, so Jeff, do you agree with that? Are stocks expensive here? And if we are heading into a recession, isn't it pretty much always the case that when that happens, the market makes new lows? So, I mean, is, doesn't that mean don't buy any more stocks, maybe sell them? Well, John, with all due respect, Katarina and Morgan Stanley, but Morgan Stanley has had a house view of being more bearish. I'm looking more opportunistically and understanding sectors. And as you know, I run a sector rotation portfolio and has understanding what sectors are revealing strength and what sectors are revealing weakness. Certainly the theme that worked in 2022, which has been absolutely on its heels in 2023, has been energy. Mm -hmm. I foresee energy coming back. So if you look at XLE, if you look at Chevron, if you look at ExxonMobil, however you want to get into that exposure, I think now is the time why, to find Jeff, that exposure. Why does, why does energy come back if the global economy doesn't come back? Well, that's where we disagree. I think the global economy comes back. Just two, three weeks ago, we were okay. getting all fired up about China coming back online. That's been put to the side because we're talking about Silicon Valley Bank and venture 
venture capitalism. So I think you do have the ability to go back and revert to the story and the theme of 2023. I get optimistic. Whenever you look at a post-midterm election year, typically the S&P 500 is up you know, double than the normal year. So I think there's a lot of areas, but you do have to be, to uh, Katarina's point, you do have to be a selective stock picker. You can't just buy healthcare, but if you like certain names in there, then it's understanding at these levels, these valuations, there may be value. We're big believers in owning Essential. I run the Essential 40 portfolio, which is blue chip, tangible names, boring names, John. But if you talk about international paper, waste management, you know, Costco, Masco, some of these names that typically don't get the attention, but there's also, you have to be considerate of the Googles, the Facebooks. They've had a great run. Why? It's all interest rate driven. We've seen the tenure come back under three and a half percent. There is opportunity, but you have to be very, very considerate not to go over your skis in some of uh, the sectors that maybe will not perform if you have broad swath exposure. Okay.